this light bulb is in series with the plug and this light bulb is in parallel with this light bulb so effectively this acts as a current limiting device so when you switch on a piece of equipment that hasn't been used in a very long time um, this can limit the damage so when you plug it in there's an initial pull of current as the capacitors and stuff charges up and what happens is um, if there's a short circuit bad situation with your equipment these bulbs will stay bright so these bulbs should extinguish pretty quickly and then you can carry on if the bulbs stay bright you switch off and you investigate the equipment so this is a nice safety net you can build one of these with common parts available at your hardware store be careful mains electricity can kill this is a 1710 it's an akai 1710 it's the last of the valve uh, based uh, reel to reel tape recorder. It's a very nice tape recorder. So, we're going to try out this system here. So, we basically we plug this here and we switch on here and then, oh, and then we do that. Now, notice how these lights came on and then they extinguished. And that means everything is okay here because these lights extinguished. So, let's try that one more time i'm going to remove this bulb because two resistances in parallel is a lower resistance so if we switch on there notice it's quite bright and then it dims down reason why we've got the press stick there is because i don't have the rubber stops right folks so we're just going to thread the tape here and we're going to thread this tape here uh, this uh, 1710 has got a included, it uh, has an amplifier in it. So if we switch on there like that, after a moment, the light dims down. And now we should be able to play and let's see what happens here. So I know that this machine is good. So I'm just showing you what a good machine uh, looks like in terms of the uh, current dimming situation. Okay, so that machine is good, it's running, and obviously it's using a bit of current, so this light powers up now. If I stop that there and I say uh, remove this bulb and now obviously this is not going to work because that's a series circuit so what we need to do now is we need to switch off here and we need to plug this so i think it would be useful to have a plug over there and there and it's running So this is the 4000 DS Mark II and what we're going to do is we're going to basically plug it in and we're going to switch on and we also have to switch on over here and yeah okay so you can see it's illuminating very dimly so let's switch off again and try that with just the one bulb aha so it's it's not extinguishing which is okay so it, it does dim down a bit so that suggests there's quite a high current draw there. And let's have a look, see with this one. Okay. So there's quite a high current draw here. It's actually higher than that machine. So that's a bit strange.
So with two bulbs, and let's put, this is a 70 watts, and this is a 42 watts. <clears throat> so it is brighter and then it dims down a bit, but it remains reasonably bright. Right, so uh, what you'll notice is the play, this play switch lever is missing here. So let's fit this one. Right, so what we can do is we can switch this on and we can now operate the play and we can see why it's drawing lots of current. So we're going to put a tape onto this machine. Okay, this machine is a D, it's a deck. So the other machine that we had a brief look at is a 1710 L. The L means leather case. And basically that machine is a complete machine with a little power output amplifier and a set of speakers all built in. So that's a complete little mini hi-fi in and of itself. So let's switch on here and let's hit the play. Okay, there's something is squeaking there. So I'm assuming that there's something that needs a little bit of oil. And so, we put this bulb here and we switch on. So these are barely glowing, the two of them. If we take the one out, it pushes the resistance through there. And you can see the machine is basically running. So I don't know, it's working quite differently to the other machine that we tested, but uh, results so far looks pretty promising. This is effectively a deck, so it doesn't have an output amplifier, it's got a pre-amplifier. And we need an external set of speakers, so let's get that organized. This is a very, very nice Akai amplifier. What you'll notice is I've replaced these were horrible, typical binding posts from that era. And I've put proper banana plugs there. And this is A, so we're going into A. And these are chunky speaker cables. And you'll see over there, I've connected it up to a set of decent speakers. There's the other speaker there. So we are ready. So before we listen to whatever sound we're gonna get out of this, tape deck. Uh, I'm just going to do the bulb test on the Akai amp. All right, so let's give this a test run. We've switched on on the amplifier. Over here is switched on over there. And we switch on. Notice how it goes very bright and then dims down. That's actually perfectly normal. We can hit the play and you'll see these needles are moving and so we're monitoring source and we can switch to auxiliary and the light is lit. We're on source and this is on play and so I'm listening up for Whoa. Okay. So there, we're getting some music. Obviously, I can't play this music for terribly long. And if I do play it, I need to talk over it. So basically, this tape recorder works.
So this is the head assembly and this cover would normally be over here and this knob would be there. That's your stereo track one and four and three and two selector. And you can operate this little switch here by hand, just moving it backwards and forwards. This is your play and stop, play, record, and you have to push in the record interlock. If the tape was running, we would be erasing and recording the tape. So make sure you're not using a good tape. And this lever here goes to a switch on the circuit board. So by operating this switch, you are running the contacts against each other, creating a bit of friction can solve a lot of problems there. But fortunately, this deck is working quite well. Right, so this is quite lucky. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything major wrong with this deck. Um, thing is though, the capacitors in this deck are 30, 40 years old. Um, also, there could be a problem with the capacitors around the motor. So, what's going to happen now is I'm basically going to leave it open for a while and I'm going to run it quite a lot uh, for a couple of weeks and just see if there are any problems. This machine is in pretty good shape considering its age and I haven't really done much to it yet. I've just cleaned it up a bit. So I'm going to run it for a few weeks and I'm going to put it back together again um, and I'll keep you posted. I'll make uh, some more videos if need be, um, if I do find any problems with it. I haven't tested the record function and I haven't put an oscilloscope on it and looked at it in any detail, but at least you can see and hear it's running. So thanks very much for watching this video. If there's any particular thing or questions you have, and look out for uh, some more videos coming in the future of fun vintage audio equipment. Hope to see you all soon.